Have you ever wondered how boudoir photographers are getting their specific types of lighting so perfect? Or maybe you know exactly how to get the light just right in Photoshop, but you would really like to get it better in camera. I get it and that's why today I'm sharing my best natural light portrait photography tips for boudoir photographers. I'm breaking down three very different lighting tips that we typically see from boudoir photographers and how you can get them right in camera. Hey, I'm Tracy and I help photographers stay forever booked out without the hustle. Be sure to grab my free guide outlining my five best tips for booking clients without Facebook ads. My first tip for natural light for boudoir photographers is all about window light. And really, window light is our only option unless you're photographing outdoor boudoir or you're adding artificial light. So make sure your studio has lots of windows and really pretty light. We're going to talk about this in a minute, but you also want to consider the paint on your walls as well. A white wall will bounce light, whereas a dark wall is going to absorb light. That means your walls are going to make a big difference in how the light falls on your client's body. Want to know more about outdoor boudoir? Be sure to watch this video next. The first type of natural boudoir lighting that I want to talk about is dark and moody. A few important things you need to consider with this type of lighting. You're going to need more controlled windows so that you can kind of turn the light down in your photos. You're also going to want things that absorb the light. Remember the dark wall. Dark shades as well will absorb light. I also think that it's important to have a light source coming from the opposite side that you're shooting from. This keeps some more light in the shadows so that you can see more detail. I truly think that you can go too far with dark and moody. So you need to make sure that your image are still correctly lit. You do not want to underexpose. Okay, this is what I would call a dark and moody photo, but the thing is I'm still bringing light from that back side over there. You can see that there's light coming in from this corner over here, and so there's also window light coming from in front of her or to the side of her, I guess, but it was still correctly exposed. So I was able to bring the shadows up as well. So that's very, very important with dark and moody. I've seen it a lot where the dark, the black shadows just go so black that you can't even pull in, like you can't even expose them a little bit more. So I just think that's really important. Something very important to know. I think this is a dark and moody, but you can still see that it is still correctly lit dark and moody is still correctly lit and then those as well and then this one's still like it's still dark but you can still see some detail as well and in case you want to see exactly how i have this set up i bring in a little bit of extra light with my continuous light but mostly what i'm using is window light and it's just barely lighting her body and you can see that here but it's more dark and moody but also notice that it's all coming from over here it looks super dark and moody but i want you to know that there's also light coming from this direction over here the second type of natural boudoir lighting that I want to talk about is light and airy. With this one, you want lots of light. Choose a room with big windows, white walls, and white sheets. And just like you can go too far with dark and moody, I think that you can go too far with light and airy. So make sure you aren't overexposing your images. Okay, let's talk about light and airy. You can see all the whites. I have silk sheets, white walls. The wall, the light is bouncing off of white walls, but everything is still correctly lit. It's not overexposed. The highlights are not too bright or too dark. The shadows are not too dark. I can still pull everything out that I need to, all the detail, even the wrinkles on the sheets. So it's just really still properly exposed, but clean light and airy. This is probably my favorite photo I've taken in the last year or so. Still, you can still see the detail in the shadows, the detail in the highlights, and that's very, very important. Some other versions of light and airy, still clean, lots of light, but everything is still properly exposed, not too bright, not too dark. Okay, so this is a totally unretouched photo, but what I want you to take away from this and what I want you to think about when you go to take this photo is you need light coming from as many directions as possible and it, it really just needs to light her entire body and just make the whites even brighter. So that is the biggest takeaway with this type of lighting is everything needs to just be bright while still being properly exposed. So with this exact picture, the light is coming from her side over here. It's also coming from in front of her, but it's also coming from over here. So as much light as possible, 
That's what we want in this situation. There's also white bouncing off of three of the four walls in this room. So it's just lighting her entire body. Very clean, very nice. The third type of natural boudoir lighting that I want to discuss is correctly lit, more traditional images. This is the lighting that is just right to me. It's correct, beautiful, and timeless. You just can't go wrong. Now let's talk about correctly lit. This still is like on the verge of dark and moody, but everything is still correctly lit. You can see all of the lights, all of the shadow, the highlights, and all of the shadows. So it's still correct, but a little bit dark and moody. I wouldn't say any light and airy in this one at all, but I'm going to show you a version of correctly lit with light and airy. I would say this is on the verge of light and airy, but everything is still correctly lit, properly exposed. And here we could go light and airy with this one, but I went with more proper exposure, correct exposure, and it's still, you can see all the detail, the highlights, the shadows, neither one are two in either direction. They're just correct. And that is very, very important when you're shooting. You want to make sure that everything is very, very correct. You don't want to go too much or too little or you'll lose the detail in your photos. You can kind of see here how she has these dark pants on and I'm almost losing the detail in these pants because they're so dark, but I'm in the shadows and the light, but almost lost the detail, but you can still see some of the wrinkles and stuff so that it's still correct, just on the verge of losing the detail. Okay, you're probably wondering why I'm showing this, but what I want to do is I want you to see this for the very first dark and moody, but also for the correctly lit. So you can see in this one, you, there is light coming from over here, but there's also light coming from over here. You can still have dark and moody and correctly lit photos with this type of lighting very easily. You just have to know how to expose in your camera. If you want more information about that, let me know in the comments. I will be more than happy to talk more about settings. And that's the best natural light portrait photography tips for boudoir. Be sure to subscribe to get notified on my next video. And it's a behind the scenes tour of my six figure boudoir photography studio. And while you wait for that, be sure to check out this other video, which is called the best posing and lighting tips for beginner boudoir photographers. If this was helpful, be sure to let me know and give it a like. Say thanks for watching. We appreciate you guys.